Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Licensed Psychologist. Now what? This is your host, Dr. Liliana Garcia. And for today, I will be starting this new series on reconnecting with your soul's desires and gifts, or how I like to call it, medicinas. ¿Por qué se escucha tan bajo? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hola, hola, hola. Hello, 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 hola, 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 hola. Ok, creo que ahora mejor. Ok. Hello, 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 hola, 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 hola. Ok, ahora. Sorry, let's start all over. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Licensed Psychologist. Now what? This is your host, Dr. Liliana Garcia. And for today, we're going to start part one of this three part series on reconnecting with your soul's desires and gifts, or how I like to call it, medicinas. For this episode, we're going to start with exploring what gets in the way. And the second episode, we're going to explore a little bit of an assessment for you to explore your own gifts and medicinas. And the last section would be on different practices that you could do to reconnect with your medicinas and gifts. So that's what this whole gonna be on um, this three part series. So let's shall begin on part one, which is starting with what gets in the way. And if you're wondering why are we starting with that, why we're not going straight into assessing our gifts and medicinas or like finding that. The reason we're not doing that is because you can have all the knowledge about your gifts and your medicinas, your soul's desires, but if you don't tackle what gets in the way, that's going to continue to get in the way and not let you do actually what your soul desires or your gifts. So that's why we're starting with that. For this section, I will be saying some with my hopes of journaling prompts, reflective prompts, but what I definitely recommend is for you to find like a cozy place and make it as cozy as possible, whether that is having a cozy drink, some candle, music, whatever it is for you to like resemble that idea of being cozy and safe. Because sometimes when we're exploring what gets in the way, we might touch on some triggers or some things. So it's important that the ambient feels good for you. Also know that at any moment you can pause this, you don't have to listen to it, you can do some regulation practices and all of that. The other thing is recommended is to have, if you want to journal about it, to have a pen and a pencil nearby. And lastly, to pause after I ask each question so that way you have time to either reflect in your mind or to write it out. Alrighty, so let's begin. The first question that I invite you to reflect on is, where do you come from? Who are your ancestors? What land did they live that you come from? And when you're exploring the lands, it's not only like naming it, but it's also like thinking that land. What kind of weather was it? What kind of foods grew there? What kind of um, fauna? fauna? In Spanish we say fauna. What kind of uh, vegetations and animals live in those lands? And what has happened to that land nowadays? Who is living in those lands? Who is taking care of those lands if they are? The other thing is your lineages. Do you come from any lineage? And what has been your experiences and the experiences of your ancestors? So I know it's a very broad, but those kind of like the idea of that first question. The more you add into it, the more that can help you to also get clear on your soul's desires, but also what is getting in the way. Number two, how do my ancestors' experiences continue to impact and influence my life? And over here, I know if you're thinking, oh, nothing is going on, but If you do a thorough exploration of where you come from and, and knowing your family history, your ancestors, and even if you don't know your ancestors or you don't have that information because of colonization, oppression, because of, yeah, all those kind of things, it still is helpful to kind of look in the history books or wherever to kind of see what they went through because intergenerational trauma, as you probably know, 
is a thing now that people are acknowledging it, even with epigenetics, about the impact on, on that in ourselves of whatever your ancestors went through. Number three, when I think of my gifts or medicina, my, fur re my first reaction is, so here there's not that much of thinking about it, but what comes into your mind when you think of your gifts and medicina in terms of thoughts. So what are the thoughts that are right now coming into your mind? Just jot them all down or just reflect on that. What are the emotions that are arising as you think of it? What sensations, feelings, and actions? So as you ponder on those, there's that idea of noticing as opposed to wanting to change. Because I bet there were some that you're like, oh, I want to change this. That's not necessarily the time. It's just to reflect and notice what is coming up for you as indicators of more information down the road. Number four, has there ever been a time in your life when you have expressed your gifts and medicinas in full expression? And if the answer is yes, when? And describe it fully. When did you express your gifts and medicinas in full expression? Number five, what experiences you lived through that have deemed your light or made you feel like your gifts and medicinas are not good enough? Number six, what systems have influ influenced your beliefs in your medicinas and gifts? And how have they influenced it? And over here, it could be either way to like influence it positively that they're encouraging you to have those medicinas and gives or neutral or negative, like are actually discouraging you to follow your soul's desires, gifts and medicinas. Number seven, how has schooling, so going to school, getting your degree, influenced your current beliefs in your medicinas and gifts? And this is very important for me because this whole programs that I've created and this PDF is targeted for psychotherapists and healers. So, and a lot of it, my story included schooling and getting my degree, my, the EVPs that I've trained have definitely influenced in my beliefs about my medicinas and gifts. And add to that, the huge movement of evidence-based practices. Number eight, what current experiences negatively impact your beliefs regarding your gifts and medicina? Some examples are your work, wherever you work, how is that negatively impacting your beliefs or actions regarding your gifts and medicinas? Relationships that you're part of, any hardships that you experienced in the past or currently. Oppression and the many more isms. And as you ponder and reflect on these eight questions, what I would invite you is to also like give yourself time. You can do it now. You can pause it now before I go into something else that I'm going to share as we're and close to ending, but to pause it and to ask yourself, What other messages are coming of things that are getting in the way of your gifts and medicinas? And just let your mind guide the lead or your body. Okay, so now that you've reflected about all of this, as you look back at your piece of papers or as you kind of like reflect on what you reflected, so that metacognition, of the factors that are getting in the way, the other thing that could be really helpful is, which is basically actually part two, which I'm going to leave it for then, which is more of the assessments and um, yeah, an assessment of, of, of those and creating a plan. So I'll leave that for part two. But what I would say is as you look at those, Maybe see if anything is popping up for you. Maybe it is a huge factor. You're like, this is the biggest one. And if anything like that comes up for you, then that could be one that you can start targeting on and start working on. So 
that's basically the exercise for today and the whole podcast I know is a little is a way shorter but it's meant to be paused for you to dedicate at least five minutes in each question so if you add all that then it will become actually the 30 minutes or more so I hope this was really helpful And as we're ending this episode, I'm also going to share something that I'm really excited about, which right now, Rooted and Rising, which is the coaching program to help psychotherapists and healer jumpstart the journey of becoming who they really are here for in a way that honors their legacies, their medicinas, but also the current season of life. And what I mean that I think that is super important as a mama of two little ones in a pandemic, which has been crazy to say the least, honoring my current state of season of life has been so important because there are ways that I can still bring my medicina, even if it's more of a limited. I know that if things would have been different, not so many limitations of raising little ones in this craziness without support, probably I will be like showing up in a very different way as I'm doing right now. But because of my own limitations and also taking care of myself and taking care of my well-being, which helps to take care of the well-being of my kiddos, I am doing it in a way that honors that, that is a little bit slower, that is a little bit more organized, and that I can still show up and use my medicina. Because for a second, I thought of just holding back and be like, you know what, I'm going to take a break from life and everything, or even from the podcast. But at the same time, there's that inner fire that continues to burn within me that goes like, "Uh uh-uh, you're not here to just, it's not to just rest because I deserve rest, but you're not here to just like not do anything. You came here for a reason. And even though you have this huge vision of where you can be and all the tools that you have that could help humanity at this moment, you can piece it out and start this way. So you're still creating that ripple effect. So that for me is super, super important. And just know that anyone that is interested and joins the program, I'm very, very conscious of that. Also coming from a mama. So that's why that aspect is so important. And basically what the program is, is four months of coaching. It starts, it's predicted to start in March 1st, all the way through June, at the end of June. It is going to be four months of coaching. It's going to include group coaching, it's, it's, um, group calls, basically. It's also going to include one-on-one calls. It's also going to include a Heal the Healer, quote-unquote Heal the Healer, retreat, virtual retreat at the beginning where we kind of go a little bit deeper about other factors that get in the way of us showing up, like intergenerational trauma, inner child stuff, and other things. We also start with a cacao ceremony with the amazing Giovanna Garcia, which cacao has been one of the medicines, the plant medicines that I've been utilizing the most, even to create this program and to create this guide that I'm um, using to create this podcast. And today I actually had cacao. Like cacao has been so important in my life for the last six six months. And also, it would also include monthly, like connecting with the soul of your business and and your soul, like practices on a monthly basis as well. So I am so looking forward if this is a program for you. It is for psychotherapies and healers that already have their degree. This is not for someone that 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 are getting their training or their degree and someone that it's interested in creating their own businesses and implementing like creating offerings and stuff like that. So if that is you, just know to look at the link here in the show notes and to go and check it out. The enrolling process is open. So it's open for enrollment right now. The last date to enroll is on February, that Friday, the last Friday of of February. And there is a process of application and there's also a call with me, an exploration call to go and get to know each other and get to know if this is a program that is a good fit for you and is if, if and that you're also like, like we're a good fit working together because there's definitely different personalities and styles. And I want to make sure that that's what the person would benefit from, from my style, because authenticity is something that is super important for me as well. So that's 
part of the reset of the call. So because there is that long process or longer process of scheduling the call, having the call, and then determining and all that, if you want to join, and if I offer that to join, then that's why I started the open enrollment right now. So I look forward for whoever needs this, that is receiving this, that the soul of you is getting that ignite fire, that in like in the guts or like in the heart, giving you the sign that if it is something for you that you click. And I look forward to meeting some of you on those exploration calls and get this program rolling. Thank you so much for listening and for being with us in this journey. Until next time, bye. <laughs>